Spontaneous human combustion occurs when a person bursts into flames due to a chemical reaction inside the body, without an external source of ignition. One fact that many of these cases have in common is that the fire never seems to spread. It occurs in one particular place, and once the victim is reduced to ashes, the fire mysteriously disappears. So here are five mysterious cases of spontaneous human combustion. Michael Faraty was a 76-year-old man who was found burned to death in the living room of his home at Clairview Park, Balabane. In the early hours of December 22, 2010, Faraty's neighbour, Mr. Mannion, was awakened by the sound of a smoke alarm. Mannion went outside to find heavy smoke coming from Faraty's house. Getting no answer from knocking on the door, he roused local residents, then shortly after called the Guardi and Fire Brigade. Faraty's home was searched by forensic experts from the Guardi and the Fire Service. His body had been found lying on its back with his head closest to an open fireplace. The fire had been entirely confined to the sitting room, and the only damage found was to the totally burnt body, the ceiling above and the floor beneath him. No trace of any accelerants were found, and there was nothing to suggest foul play had taken place. Assistant Chief Fire Officer Jerry O'Malley told the inquest into the death that after a thorough investigation, fire officers were satisfied that the open fire was not the cause of the blaze which led to Faraday's death. A post-mortem carried out by pathologist Grace Callaghy noted that Faraday had suffered from type 2 diabetes and hypertension, but had not died from heart failure. Callaghy concluded that the extensive nature of the burn sustained pre-clues determining the precise cause of death. In September 2011, the West Galway coroner Dr. Kira McGlowan informed the inquiry into the death that he searched medical literature to determine the cause of death. The coroner referred to Professor Bernard Knight's book on forensic pathology, which states that a high number of alleged incidents of spontaneous human combustion had taken place near an open fireplace or chimney. The coroner subsequently made a statement to the inquiry. This fire was thoroughly investigated, and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for which there is no adequate explanation. George Mott was a retired fireman that suffered from lung problems and required an air mask and pump to breathe. In March 1986, his son Kendall went to go and see him and found all the windows browned and the interior smoked. His father's remains consisted of ash, a few splinters of bone and a fragment of skull. The very localised damage suggested that George had died from spontaneous combustion, a situation that has yet to be explained. George was a known drinker and used an oxygen tank, but it was not in use at the time of his death. A pack of matches were found next to the tank, but had never ignited. Young Sip Kim lived in Hawaii his whole life. He spent most of it paralysed from the waist down and made his way around in his wheelchair. In December 1956, he was at home when without warning flames began to emanate from his stomach, rapidly spreading in all directions and engulfing him within seconds. A neighbour of his quickly ran to his aid and later said that he was covered in blue flames. She called for assistance from the fire department, but by the time they had arrived some 15 minutes later, both the man and his wheelchair were nothing more than a pile of ash. All that remained of him was a pair of feet. No other areas of the room suffered any damage and once the flames had succeeded in reducing the paralysed man to nothing more than ash, they seemed to have simply disappeared instead of spreading elsewhere. Firemen and investigators were perplexed by this, as there were clothes and books all around that should have caught fire given their proximity to the fire. In 2013, when Danny Van Zandt's incarcerated body was discovered by members of his family, it was instantly apparent that although the heat and power of the blaze must have been great, there was no other damage to the rest of the wooden house where the 65-year-old lived in Oklahoma. Van Zant's brother discovered the victim in the kitchen and immediately called 911. Fire crews found a badly burned body but no fire damage to nearby furniture or other items. There were no signs of a break-in or struggle or any cause of death. Although many people pointed out that Van Zant was a well-known alcoholic and very heavy cigarette smoker, the physical evidence at the property suggested that neither were the cause. Not only was no other part of the home damaged, but there were no signs that a struggle had taken place which might have suggested foul play. Investigator Ron Lockhart, as if to make a point even clearer, stated, You could pour gasoline on somebody and he wouldn't be as badly incinerated. Although Lockhart said that he believed that there must have been some ignition source, the suggestion of spontaneous human combustion was not officially ruled out. Sheriff Lockhart said it's very unusual and it's bizarre and I can't explain it. 
it's well known that a tremendous amount of wood was required to reduce a human frame to mere ashes. On average, two cartloads of wood were required to burn a criminal at the stake, and the same amount was needed to cremate a corpse. So the fact that people are being found burned down to ashes, including their bones on relatively undamaged floors, with no other obvious signs of fire damage within the area and often with undamaged limbs left behind, all implied a form of burning that had to be quite different from the fires used for cremation, a form of burning that might be supernatural. Mary Hardy Reeser of St. Petersburg, Florida was a believed victim of spontaneous human combustion. The last time Mary had been seen alive was at 9pm on the night of the fire. Her son, Dr. Richard Reeser, and her landlady, Mrs. Carpenter, had visited Mary and said their farewells at around 9pm, leaving Mary sitting comfortably in her chair. On July 2, 1951, at around 8am, Reese's landlady, Mrs. Carpenter, arrived at Reese's door with a telegram. Trying the door, she found the metal doorknob to be uncomfortably warm to touch, and called the police. Upon entering Mary's apartment, a grisly sight confronted them. The freakish remains of Mary were discovered on a burned-out chair with only the charred coiled springs remaining. The only parts of her left were her left foot, which still had a slipper on it, her backbone, and a mysteriously shrunken skull. Mary's body, which weighed 170 pounds, had been reduced to less than 10 pounds. The only damage to the apartment was a small circular burned area. At the side was a plastic wall socket which had melted and caused her clock to stop at 4.20 a.m. These findings and the remains of Mary baffled the firemen, police, and pathologists who examined them. Mary's apartment showed all the signs of heat damage. Walls were covered with a greasy soot, a mirror had cracked, and plastic switches and two candles had melted. Experts said that a temperature of 2,500 degrees is necessary for such an extreme cremation. A cigarette could never have produced such a high temperature if it had ignited the chair or clothing. An FBI pathologist carried out tests for gasoline, but nothing was found. Even a lightning storm had been considered, but no such storm had occurred in St. Petersburg on the night of her death. On the 7th of July, 1951, St. Petersburg Police Chief J.R. Reichert sent a box of evidence from the scene to FBI Director John Edgar Hoover. He included glass fragments found in the ashes, six more objects thought to be teeth, a section of the carpet, and the surviving shoe. Reichert sent with the evidence a note which read, we request any information or theories that could explain how a human body could be so destroyed, and the fire confined to such a small area and so little damage done to the structure of the building. The FBI eventually declared that Rita had been incinerated by the wick effect. As she was a known user of sleeping pills, they hypothesized that she'd fallen unconscious while smoking and set fire to her nightclothes. The FBI wrote in its report, once the body starts to burn, there is enough fat and other inflammable substances to permit varying amounts of destruction to take place. Sometimes this combustion of burning will proceed to a degree which results in almost complete combustion of the body. However, the local police never bought the wick effect story, and to many, her death remains a mystery. So that was five mysterious cases of spontaneous human combustion. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.